What up, y'all? Your partner, Big Boy, the voice of Los Angeles. Yo, what up? It's your man, DJ AO. Yeah, I'm your girl, Nina Chantel. The homie, J9. Hey, it's Letty. DJ Damage. DJ Charisma, Young California. They call me DJ here. Hey, I'm Ashley Caprice. I'm Vic One. Chuck Dizzle, live and direct. Hey, guys, I'm Spicy Mari with Real 92.3. DJ I'm one. I'm 13 years old. I'm the youngest female DJ here at Real 92.3. Doc Winter, I'm the uh, Senior Vice President of Urban Programming for iHeartMedia and Program Director of Real 92.3 here in LA. Shout out to Hip Hop DX. What up, her? Hello. Real 92.3, LA's Hip Hop and R&B. Big Boy, Big Boy's Neighborhood. It is going down. You do want to stick around your radios. We got your 710 phone tap. Coming up, Curtis here, your good friend, Mr. Luther Lufe. And also at 720, you want to go to the Real Birthday Bash. We got your tickets up. I remember my first, what the first year was like when I first got into radio, like just kind of like timing, like doing the Hollywood Christmas Parade and you know, working with the Baker Boys. I remember that, but not like my, my first song and my first interview, like <clears throat> with Real, I know what my first song was. I know what my first interview was because it was the, the start of something new. So I took a lot more notice to that first day and that first week and that first artist. So I was able to kind of lock in my first a little bit more this time. Uh, it's been an amazing year. I mean, I, I thought we had the assets to be successful. I didn't expect our success to come as quickly as it did. I mean, clearly uh, Los Angeles was um, thirsting for a true, real hip hop station. Not a hip hop station, but a hip hop station. And so we satiated a need that they had and uh, they gravitated to us pretty quickly. We launched in uh, February. February 6th. Yo, we got the power now! I remember that, like right off the bat. We were commercial free for a month. I was the architect of the 10,000 joints in a row, which I've used in several market launches. I just remember the first song being only. Doom. It just kicked in and that was the first song we played. And I remember that thoroughly. About a month and a week later, a Big Boy started, I started, uh, our night show started. And Nina came the week after, and um, ever since personalities have been on this radio station, we have beat our com competition, so. So Doc Winter, our uh, program director, the most amazing man. I've been working with him for about 13 years, on and off, and he called me one day and said, yo, I'm gonna need you to move to LA, what's up? Not only did I know it was something that was real and was gonna stick around, it's like, yo, you got big boy. Big boy moved. If Big Boy moved, you know that this is something that people are investing in, people believe in it, and it's going to be really LA, and I wanted to be a part of that. When I do my morning show, all you need is a grin to get in, no matter what kind of skin you're in. You know, and, I, and that's what I want Real to continue to be. Big Boy is one of those legendary talents that kind of supersedes, I mean, almost radio. Knowing and working with Big, I know he deserved a lot. I was happy for him. When I first heard the big announcement of Big Boy moving in the real in 92, I was, I was like, man. Big Boy is synonymous with LA. He's been on the air for 20 plus years. People have grown up with him. Um, people love Big. It's funny because there was a moment where there was no Big Boy on the radio, which is crazy to be in LA and not have that. It's like to be in LA and not have sunshine. So when he came back on, I think people were just like, yes, like it, the, the way that they gravitated towards him, it shows the power of him as a, as a personality, but also the bond that him and LA have. It's like no other. My target audience is, is LA. I am LA. I grew up my whole life is LA, you know what I'm saying? I could roll you around LA and don't have to ask Siri shit. I don't have to punch in nothing on the navigation, none of that. So my, my target audience is LA. I've got some incredibly talented people that work with me. I was in Chicago, I was working for the same company for iHeartMedia. Actually, you called me on a Thursday, told me I need you on Monday. And I moved within that amount of time. When Doc Winner called me, it's like, I've always worked with him, I trust him. He's the best boss ever. Doc can sit there and change your life in a minute. I remember getting the, con the, the call. Hey, yeah, um, I was just talking to Ed. I've seen the footage you guys on YouTube, on Homegrown Radio, you guys doing stuff in an apartment. That's, that's pretty dope. So yeah, I, on, you're on Sundays, you're feeling on Sundays, seven midnight. Let's let's uh, let's put Homegrown Radio on, on that night. And I'm on the phone like, oh, okay, yeah, like, 
I connected with Real because I came from a previous station, KGLH, and I was giving spicy tips over there. And I kind of followed uh, Doc Wonder's career and was just hoping for an opportunity to be able to work with him one day. So when he uh, gave me the opportunity to work with iHeart, I jumped on it immediately. And he brought me on as a part of the team. He thought it would be a good collabo to be able to give spicy tips and you know get into the mix. <laughs> Out of nowhere, people come to me like, hey man, I've been putting the word for you for that new radio station. I'm just like, really? like. And telling Doc about you, and I'm just like, man, Doc, like that's somebody you see on Google and the magazines, you know, hip hop, kingpins type stuff like that. It's like, wow, that's that's major. So it kind of happened like that, kind of like word of mouth. And I came in, I called in for an interview, did an air check on the spot, and <laughs> at 9:23 a.m. Thursday, I, I was told, hey, you know, you're no longer working with uh, with Hot, but you're still there. You're gonna board off for the new station, booty boot, whatever. I talked to Doc, like two weeks after that happened, I played my demo and he's like, uh, looks over at the whiteboard, he's like, oh man, that's you right there, you think you can handle that? And it was a Sunday morning from eight to 10 a.m. Worked with him on the national level as well as he oversaw my radio station in Miami. And then when this situation came about, he asked me to leave the warm uh, party city of Miami and to come to uh, LA, which is probably the only city I would leave Miami for. I turned down Doc's original situation, you know, and I waited it out. I stayed at Power for a year and I watched this station for a year. When it finally did happen and then I finally decided to make the move, my, my heart was like, this is it. I got to do it. I know I made the right choice. I'm, I'm happy the streets know I made the right choice. Big um, exchange information with my, mo my, with my mother and so he gave me um, Doc's information and then that's when I came over here. He was just like, why don't you just go in the studio, show us what you could do for a little bit, and then we'll discuss it after. So maybe about an hour and 30 minutes later, I we got the job. I'm definitely not a traditional manager, probably because um, like some of the better basketball coaches, I've actually been in the game. You know, I've done mornings, I've done nights, I've been a very popular announcer, and I've seen how it can affect your life. You know, we established a culture. I was really diligent in the people that I wanted to hire. I mean, some people I talked to them and then I didn't call them back for weeks. Uh, then there were some people who I talked to and I was like, um, I let them know right away because it was a marriage, you know, and I, and I needed to make sure that when they came into this building that they were willing to put their heart and soul into not only the radio station, but to accept the fact that they were gonna be a part of this culture. What I love about Doc is Doc is seasoned in the game, but Doc is good enough in the game to listen to you. You know, he know he's one of those cats that know how to be coach and kind of, you know, come in and tell you this, back up and let you do it. Doc is first of all a friend and someone that I can confide in and ask for advice, he's a mentor true definition to me uh, uh, as a mentor. Well, Doc is the coolest man you could ever work for. The coolest, like, he doesn't even have to be that cool. I'm the boss that's gonna be in the middle of the jokes. Man, this dude is so calm and collected and so caring. I'm the boss that's gonna be cracking jokes with you. Doc will just, he walk in the room and he's like, hey, uh, we wanna put y'all brand Homegrown Radio, we gonna put that on the air, let's start this week. And then he's like, all right, I'm out. Like, 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 what the fuck? All right. All right. <laughs> you know, having a beer with you and talking shit to you. Man, it's like one of the best people I ever worked with, period. It's only been one year. I already know, like, the best experience ever, man. Good dude. But then when my eyes change and I say do your job, then you got to do your job. They've respected it and they followed our lead and they are passionate about preserving the culture too. God bless him. The people that we have on this staff, I feel are some of the best people in radio. We have some of the most creative people. We all are in it for each other. Like when one of us wins, we all win and that's so special. It's great energy, bro, but energy starts from whatever, whatever the source is. It's like big energy, dude. It's like, I can't even explain it. This is crazy. Everyone's passionate. A great company is made up of great people. If I'm happy, my team is right. If Doc is happy, the entire team is right. When I come here, it's like magical. When I walk through the door, the people here, my coworkers here at the station, they love me and I love them. They're like my second family.